All right, we're at uh, release 45, and uh, I have some interesting features with this. Um, so in the uh, previous version, just released uh, a few days ago, release 44, I added the uh, resizing panels. So we can do this now, and this allows us to use much more of the uh, screen real estate much better. So we can view a lot more of our images on the screen without having to constantly scroll. And uh, the space up here, if our sprite is small, uh, we don't have to uh, waste all that space. Uh, normally you'd waste around this much space. Now we can uh, resize and uh, everything works exactly the uh, same way. And we can switch between our images much easier. So that allows us to uh, see things better. So that's a good improvement. The other improvement, which uh, I've been meaning to do for a while, is add uh, transparent ping files. So I added ping files a while back, but uh, they weren't transparent. Uh, there was a way you could still use them if you, uh, if you knew what you were doing with some um, libraries, but by default, they weren't transparent. Uh, so I've made that easier, and I'll show you how that works. And, uh, it's by just basically uh, choosing one of our colors. I'll choose this one because it's the closest to it. Uh, we'll make uh, this uh, fuchsia, which is uh, the red value is 255 and the blue value is 255. So if we save this image, let's just uh, paint the background. So the, uh, the background will be uh, transparent now. So this uh, fuchsia color uh, if you load it up in uh, in most programs, let me just save it and we can do a little demo. And let me just put it in its own folder so I can find it a lot easier. And we'll select ping here. We'll call it uh, demo1.png. And uh, let's open it in... Uh, Micro Studio. So I'm looking at the uh, the sprites tab here, and uh, let me just bring up a, a file folder on this other monitor. And uh, here, let me bring it into view here. So there's the the file we just saved. So if I drag it into here, we can see that. Uh, it's fully transparent here. So this is the uh, the color you normally see. Now there was a way you can do this without actually um, having the image transparent. Let me just show you. Let's undo this. I'll save it as demo2. And let's bring this in here as well. And so now we we have a black background, uh, which is not transparent. But there is a way to convert this. And it, as long as your opacity here is uh, nothing, basically, um, you can just uh, use the eyedropper, pick the color. And now if we uh, if we paint. Where's our fill? Yeah, fill. It becomes transparent. So that that was an easy way of doing it. Uh, if you didn't support uh, transparent pings, but you had to know how to do this. Uh, again, if you have images that are not transparent, you could use this technique. So this works in Micro Studio. Let me just jump to QB64 here and. I have a previously saved image. Let me just run this so you can see what it, what's happening here. And I'll explain. So the this is what's being loaded up. The, the line is something I'm drawing just before I, I displayed the image. And so this is a transparent image. And the background is, is black. But if we uh, let's change the uh, background to be blue and uh, we can do this with the 
underscore RGB and specify an RGB color. So let's run that again. It takes a few seconds for um, QB64 to uh, compile things. Uh, And my compile failed because I have an error here. It should be comma. Let's uh, let's try this again. And here we go. So now we have a, a blue background, and uh, we can see uh, it's transparent again. So this works in QB64 if you want to use transparent images you have to use the uh, the underscore put image command but as long as the uh, ping file is transparent it will display properly in QB64 uh, and this works in other programs as well I'm just using QB, uh, QB64 as an example um, you might be using other libraries like Raylib uh, but this should work in anything and uh, Hopefully that'll extend the uh, use of this program. Uh, I will be adding a, a map editor option in the future, so that should make it uh, much more usable in other libraries. So far I've been focusing on just uh, the classic, retro, uh, popular, basic, Pascal and C uh, libraries and interpreters, going all the way back to GW Basic. GW Basic is one of those I meant to support only a little bit, but I ended up uh, supporting fully with the uh, all the screen modes and even mouse shaped data. There's uh, some code on my GitHub that allows you to display uh, mouse shapes and use the mouse in GW Basic. So if you're willing to tinker around uh, even with GW Basic, all this is useful. So that's it for now. Um, I'll, I'll do a further update in the future, probably not the next release, but maybe wait for a few releases so I have enough fe features to show. Uh, but this is where we're at so far. So hopefully you appreciate the uh, new sliding panels that allows you to view more images.